Hello everyone, welcome back to our Spring Security with Angular tutorial series. In previous video, we have created our current user service, which is used to load the user by the username. And we also have created a user in memory repository, where, which we use to store our users and which we are going to replace later on with uh, an actual JPA repository. Now the next step is to um, implement something for our session handling. And for that, we are going to be creating a new package. Let's um, name it just sessions or session. And inside of this package, we are going to create again in-memory session registry. So this in-memory session registry will, as you probably can, um, yeah, uh, notice by the name it's in memory it will probably be replaced and we're going to be replacing it with um, I guess Redis implementation so for those of you who do not know Redis is um, distributed mm, I don't know um, no relationship database which you can use to store different kind of things and it's actually quite convenient for storing sessions but don't worry about it now for now for now we just talk about in memory so let's create a new class new java class and let's name it in memory session registry so we are going to make this a uh, component and we are going to do something similar as we did for the users we're going to create a hash map and we're going to use it to store our sessions And here it is. So we get we have our hash map. Now we need some methods. We need a method to uh, register a session, and also we need a method to get the username. So or to get the uh, basically the, the the yeah to get the 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 session based on the token. So um, let's create a method here uh, to public void register actually this will not be void this will be string and we're going to call it register session and to this register session we are going to be passing in one parameter and that will be the username and um yeah so with this username we are going to yeah, the username will be mapped. So we're going to map this. This will be our session ID. And this here will be our username. So let's, how do we create a, a, a session ID? So let's create a private um, string. And let's call it um, generate session ID, I guess. And to this, we are not going to be passing anything. What you're going to return here is a new string. And to this string, we are going to be using the base64 encoder for uh, get encoder. And we are going to encode um, UID, so some random UID. Um, and uh, I think get bytes, yeah. So what we are doing here is we are getting this encoder and we are encoding a random UID, um, which is just some string that we have to generate this session ID. And once we have that, so we can do something here like if um, username equals null, we are just going to return null. Or we can actually, instead of returning null, we can um, draw new runtime exception um, needs to be provided. so username needs to be provided and if we have the username we can generate a session ID uh, we can name it session ID and we can put it here and then we are going to register it basically so sessions dot um, Put if absent, and we are going to use um, the session ID, uh, which is generated. Actually, we need 
two maps. Now that I think about it, we need uh, two maps so that we always don't generate a new session ID if it already exists. Because you can also implement something as sessions that would expire and stuff like that. So if we want to handle that, we would need two maps. So mapping from session ID to username and from username to session ID. To why? So if you call register session with some username and um, it already exists, you might want to reuse it. But if you don't want to reuse it, in our case, it doesn't really matter. So let's um, just go with put if absent, but it will always be absent. So we can just go with put because session ID is random. So we go session ID and username. Yep. And then we return session ID here. And that's it for the registration. Now we want to go public uh, string and we are going to name it get get username for session and we are going to be passing in a string session id so with this we go, what we're going to do is return uh, sessions dot get and then session id it's actually quite simple um, so we have two methods one is for registering our session where we pass in the username we uh, generate some random session ID and we store it uh, in our sessions hash map and then we just return this ID and it will be used somewhere and then we also have a met method to get the username for session so if you have a session ID you want to figure out to which username it's linked um, yeah this is how you can do it so you just uh, get it from this sessions uh, hash map Okay, um, now what we want to do is we want to implement something called session filter. The session filter is used to, um, whenever you make a request, so we're going to register this session filter somewhere, we'll get to that later on. And whenever you make a request, um, you want to validate if this user is authorized or not. So for example, imagine that you uh, make a request and then do, do you have this uh, headers in the HTTP request and from the headers you can get the authorization header and in the authorization header we're going to keep the session ID. If you don't have it, that means okay, you're not authorized, go back. If you have it, then we go in our in-memory session registry and then we try to load the yeah, we try to load the username for this session. So we have the session ID from the header and then we try to find the session for it. So we try to find the username. If you don't find it, again, go back because you can send whatever session ID and if it doesn't exist, yeah, go back. If you find the username, then you'd load that user from the, um, uh, from the database or from our in-memory database. We're going to use our in-memory um, repository and you authorize it and that's it. Yeah, let's build it. So let's build um, a new Java class and let's name it uh, session filter. Uh, let's make this a component again. And the session filter is going to implement or it's actually going to extend um, once per request filter. Oops. And this comes from the web filter and we're going to implement something called do filter internal. This is where all of the exciting stuff will happen. Okay, so we need to um, inject one thing here and that would be our in-memory session registry. So private in-memory session registry, let's call it session registry. We can actually make it final and then um, add it as a constructor parameter. And here we can also make it final and auto wired. And then we do our magic here. What do we have here? We have a request, a response, and a filter chain, which we can rename to chain. And um, what we're going to do first is we're going to fetch our header. So if you go request, get header, then you have to give a header name. So if you go HTTP, headers you can actually oops not that one headers from the spring framework um you can get the authorization header and this would be our authorization header final basically this would be uh, the session id and as we said we check if the session id uh, is null or if the 
session ID um, length. So if we have something is less than zero or sorry, if it's equal zero, then if it is, what you want to do is chain chain do filter requests response. So no authorization in this case, you just go back. Okay, now if we have our session ID, what are we going to do? We're going to use the session registry. We're going to go and get username for session. We're going to pass in the session ID here and username, we can make it final. Again, if, uh, if username equals null, um, we are going to do the same. Change to filter. Actually, we need a return here and we need to return here. Okay, now if we have done that, so if we have the username, we have loaded it. Um, what we are going to actually, we have the username, but we don't have the, the user. What we are going to do here is private final current user service and we're going to add the current user as a constructor parameter. So current user service, make this final. And now we're going to use the current user service to load the user by username. So if we pass in the username, we load the user. Or we can current user and this will be current Current user uh, can. Mm, what's it complaining about? Ah, yeah. Here we are returning the user details. We can change that to return the current user. That should be fine. And uh, let's make this final. And um, we could do some checks here if the current user exists and stuff like that. But we actually know that it does exist, so we don't have to worry about it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to authorize this current user. Um, so we're going to go and say a new user name, name, password, authentication token. And to this token, we can pass in the current user. We can go null and current user get authorities. This is all the things that we have. And let's create a variable and make it final. Now with this, um, what we're going to do is, um, we're going to set, first we're going to set some details about the request. So if you go this, set details, now you can set new web, whoops, sorry, new web authorization, uh, authentication um, details source set um sorry build details nope oops build details and we're going to pass in the request here so basically we are, what we are doing here is we're setting some information about the current request that's being made so if it will be authorized or not and then we want to go uh, security context um, holder and we're going to get the context and inside the context, we're going to set authentication um, to this one that we just built. And at the end we do, as we did before, we go to filter. But now we have the authentication here uh, set so we can actually return. You could uh, do this in a different way. You could invert all of these checks and then do the authentication and then just do chain do filter once but it's whatever, I don't really care. It's the same. Basically what we have with it is uh, we have the authentication uh, ready. So that would be the session filter and in memory session registry, we can stop with this now because there is only one step left and that's actually building the configuration itself, but that's something for the next video. So I will see you in the next one.